Hello everybody, I'm Brad and welcome to Mediocre Models. Um, for this episode today, um, I'm going to paint some Australian 8th Army. Uh, this was good fun to paint. Um, I really liked how these turned out. And um, probably one of the easiest and simplest armies to paint, actually. Uh, very few colours and, well, I think they look pretty good. And um, <clears throat> these are some ones I painted before, and this is the one that I'll I'll paint up and show for everybody. Okay. Now for the contrast paints for this particular model, I'll be using Skeleton Horde, uh, Gorgrunt of Fur, Black Templar, Agaros Dunes, Snakebite Leather, Militarum Green. Plague Bear Flesh and Gilliman Flesh. Um, and that'll cover basically majority of the model. Um, then for the metal on his gun and some of the uh, clips and his belt buckles and things, I'll use Lead Belcher. Uh, and then I've got some Null Oil and Agrax Earth Shade for shade downs at the end. Um, so for the first one we'll use is Skeleton Horde. Um, and this will cover. Uh, basically his pants and his shirt, basically all of his webbing, and his um, gaiters down the bottom here as well. Uh, the model has been primed in Corax White. Um, I always use Corax White to prime all my models. Um, I just like the way how it looks and it's nice and easy to see all the detail and everything like that. Um, yeah. So basically we just put it on. Uh, when using the contrast paints, um, they're advertised as, you know, just slap it on and you're good to go. But um, I find it's better if you put it on thinly. Uh, obviously not too thin. Um, but yeah, you just, you want nice thin layers. Just like regular paints generally. You can go a little bit heavier and um, and just try and spread the paint around. So you put it all over his uniform. And his gaiters down the bottom here. Above his boots but below his socks. Uh, finished putting all the skeleton hoard on. Um, it's still wet, still drying, but that's all right. Um, the next color I'll move on to is Agaros Dunes, and for that I will do his slouch hat. Um, Agaros Dunes, it's sort of mm, a more darker yellow, uh, and it will it will stand out from the skeleton hoard. Uh, this color generally will only be used at least for the slouch hats, at least for myself. But, um, just putting it on, you can see it's, it's a slightly darker shade of yellow. So it can still fit in with the desert theme, um, but it'll stand out from just the main bulk of the uniform itself. And do the top and underneath. Now don't worry too much if you get paint sort of on the skin and things like that. Um, for 
majority of the time you can sort of if you get it with on things you can um go over with other colors and that'll cover it up um but at the end once i move on to the flesh and that we'll tidy up with the corax white and make sure everything's nice and tidy and then we can finish it off that way so yeah that's just the agaros dunes it's on Uh, the next colour we'll be using is Gore Grunt of Fur, and for that I'll be doing his boots, uh, his uh, sheath for his bayonet, and any uh, leather uh, sort of straps for his gun or anything like that. So this will basically go straight on, and as you can see I've got um, Skeleton Horde it's gone onto his boots, but the gore grunter fur will just go straight over that and uh, cover it up, so you don't need to worry about tidying that up too much. But you just have to be careful not to get the gore grunter fur onto his uh, his uh, gaiters. So you just got to be a bit careful. And try and keep your brush closer to the the ground. So his boots, his bayonet sheath. And the strap for his SMG. Uh, the next color I would go on to would be Black Templar, um, but for this particular model um, I won't use it simply because the Black Templar would be used on just the, the handle for the bayonet itself. Uh, there's nowhere else that I would put it, so yeah for him we don't need it, but if I was painting up one with a rifle that's where it would go, just on his the handle of his bayonet there. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do um, with the next couple of paints that we've got, um, they don't cover too well over the skeleton horde if you've spilt any on the other areas. Um, so I'm going to go around with the Corax white just out of the pot and fix up his skin, um, any wooden areas on the gun, uh, and his socks. And that's just with Corax white. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention before, while the Corax White is uh, drying, that I've just put on to neaten up some of the areas. Um, if you have any of the infantry with the the Brody helmets, um, for that I just go over that with just Skeleton Horde. So, uh, no Agaros tunes on this one, it's just Skeleton Horde. Um, and that way, it's a nice desert yellow. Um, ties in with the uniforms well, but just with the slouch hats, I want them to stand out just a little bit differently because they're a different material, I suppose, and I just want them to stand out a little bit more. Uh, yeah, so if you're doing any with the the Brody helmets, uh, it's just skeleton skeleton horde over that um, top and underneath. Uh, now that the Corax White has dried just out of the pot. Uh, the next colour I'll move on to is Snakebite Leather. Um, and for this, this will go onto the wooden parts of his weapon. So for this particular weapon, it'll be the stock and just the grip handle at the front. And if you're feeling brave enough, the, uh, the main handle of the weapon. <laughs> I like to use the snake bite leather because it uh it's a nice sort of color and um it it stands out from the rest of the model so um 
easily identifiable and adds a bit more colour. Um, yeah. That's on the main stock grip at the front. And uh, I won't worry too much about his, his pistol grip here. <laughs> Using the snake bike leather for anyone with a rifle, uh, it'll obviously be the uh, main body part of the rifle itself. Uh, the next colour we'll move on to is uh, Militarum Green, uh, and for that, it'll be doing his uh, his socks. Uh, once again. Um, I like it to stand out a little bit more. You could probably paint these uh, in the snake bite leather or even agarose dunes, make them yellow, just to make them sort of more deserty. But uh, I like the green socks. Uh, when using the green, just be careful, uh, don't worry about too much getting it onto the skin because you can come back with Corax White, fix that up again, uh, but be careful about getting it onto his gaiters. Uh, the next colour I'll move on to will be Plague Bear Flush, uh, and with this colour I'll be using it to go over all his webbing, so his uh, pouches for his Bren Gun magazines, the spare magazines for the Squad LMG, uh, the straps, on the front of him, uh, his belt that goes all the way around, his backpack, his straps over the back there, his water canteen, and also over his uh, gaiters as well. And um, using the Plague Bearer Flesh, you just want to get a small amount and just go over it just a little bit, just to give it that nice faded uh, sort of green khaki look. Uh, you don't have to do this, um, but I like to do it because, once again, it sort of helps differentiate parts on the model, makes it stand out a little bit more, and it just, it looks nice, I think. Uh, yeah, so that's the Plague Bear Flesh. Uh, when doing it, you sort of just have to be careful, just go slow, try to just pick out parts that you want. Uh, your smaller brushes obviously going to be better for this and work better. That's all these webbing that goes right around and his gaiters as well. Uh, with the Plague Bear Flesh it sort of doesn't matter if you get it onto his socks, it'll sort of just blend right in. Uh, same as his boots. It's a sort of very thin weak colour so it, it won't stain them that much. But uh, it's always good to just be careful and try and practice neat lines. Yeah. Uh, the next paint we'll be using will be Gilliman Flesh, um, and this will well, obviously go over all his flesh. Uh, once again, you just want to put it on thinly. Um, the more layers you put on, the darker it'll get, so you can let this layer dry, put another layer on, make it darker, make them look sunburned I suppose, or more tanned, they've been out in the desert longer. Um, I did that with some of my weapon teams where they've got bare skin showing, uh, just to give them that 
sort of feel that they've been out for a while fighting uh, and yeah they've just been tanned or burnt by the harsh desert sun uh, so this will obviously go over his arms his legs, the exposed areas and obviously his face Uh, so once you've finished putting the Gilliman flesh on, uh, that's basically all the contrast paints done for just the base layering. Uh, the only things left to do now are just using lead belcher for any metallic areas, and then final shades. Um, so I'll let the Gilliman flesh a bit dry a bit more, and then um, yeah, we'll continue on and finish them off. Uh, the Gilman flesh is basically fully dry now, uh, so I'm going to move on to doing the metallic areas um, using lead belcher, and for that it'll be his belt buckle at the front, any clips that are on the front of him on his uh, webbing. Uh, obviously, for myself, I like to do the weapons. Uh, with silver, I know not everyone likes that, they like the the blackened metal uh, but I like to just do silver, do a coat of non oil and that's it uh, so that'll be on his weapon, or the metallic areas on that uh, any, once again, any uh, clips on his backpack uh, there are small clips underneath as well, if you can see them and the top and bottom of the sheath for his bayonet. Uh, for anyone with a rifle, it'll be obviously the main part here, part it's along the top there. The barrel, his bayonet, I uh, do the back and front portions of the handle. Um, and yeah, that's that's it for the rifles. So I'll finish off his weapon and uh, let that dry, and then basically, once the metal's dry, I'll go around, look over the whole model. Uh, see if there's any areas that I'll need to fix up in case you spill any of the metal or some of the other colors have gone too much onto the other ones. Uh, basically, I'll go through with Corax White, fix any of that up, and make it all neat and tidy. Um, for some of them, they'll have a cigarette. Um, I'll simply just paint that in Corax White and just leave it like that. Uh, so I'll finish this off and then. I'll come back and we'll do the shading. Uh, now the lead belcher is dry, I'm going to go over all the metallic areas with just non oil. And that's just to, that's just to darken the metal down and obviously make it not stand out so much. As always, be careful your non oil doesn't spill over. quite prone to doing that. You just get the null oil, slap it on there, and that'll just darken the metal down. So for that it'll just be obviously the weapon itself, at least for this it's majority of it. And then you just go around and just put a little bit on 
each of the metal tabs at the back, the top and bottom of his sheath, his belt buckle on the front, and clips on the front of his webbing. Once that's dry, then we'll just move on to the Agrax Earth Shade, and that'll just basically be an entire coat over the model, but um, trying to avoid the metal, at least on the weapon. If you're painting just regular British, instead of doing Australians like I am, um, the only major difference would probably be for the boots um, and for the boots I would just use Black Templar and just make them black. Uh, apart from that everything else would be the same except they wouldn't have slat shots. Uh, another thing is if you have any of the infantry that have straps on their helmets whether that's they actually got the straps or it's across the top or anything um, I'll also put a layer of Plague Bearer flesh over the top of that as well, just to make it that green khaki sort of look. Uh, the non oil is dry, um, so the next thing to do is get the Agrax Earth Shade and big brush, uh, and basically I'll just put this over the entire model. Um, I like to do this because it darkens the model right down, gives it a nice, uh, really worn look to them. It makes them feel as if they've been in combat, you know, they're out in the field fighting instead of that, you know, clean look. Nothing wrong with that, but uh, I like my models to be, you know, nice and dirty. They've been out in the field fighting. It is war. Yeah, and that'll basically be a Grexo shade over the whole model. Uh, same as the contrast paints, uh, be a bit careful using this. Uh, make sure it doesn't pull too much. Uh, if you do get pooling, just use your brush to sort of wipe away the excess. Basically, I'll put this over everything, just trying to avoid the metal on the gun itself. Uh, and that's basically the last step for this guy. So, um, I'll let that dry and we'll come and have a look at him when he's all dry and yeah that'll be it. Uh, the Agrax Earthshade is basically almost fully dry now um, and as you can see hopefully it's dulled the colors right down a lot and um, has given him a nice really gritty battle-worn feel to him. I really like this sort of look to them, makes them look more authentic, at least to myself. Um, I'm not going to do any edge highlighting or anything like that, it's basically that's how it is and yeah, he's all finished. Um, I'm not going to do his base, uh, if people are interested I'll do separate videos on it. Um, but yeah, that's basically how I paint my Australian 8th Army and that's how I've done all my models. Um, it's a really quick, simple process. Uh, I usually do at least one to two six-man squad squads at a time. Um, by the time you start the first model and you get to the last model, the first model's dry and you can keep going through. Um, the only thing you've got to be careful about is obviously just your control with the contrast paints itself and also with uh, certain paints and that. Um, you'll get stuff that sticks on the bottom. I've got mixing balls 
in all my paints so when I mix them together it just uh, helps the particles at the bottom really mix in and um, make sure that it all mixes through and you get good colors out of your paints uh, so yeah so he's all finished and with their bases done or at least how I've done my bases um, I've given them a nice desert look to them a little desert tuft um, but yeah so that's how I paint my Australian 8th Army so hopefully you enjoyed the tutorial and um, hopefully it helps you and inspires you and if you like the look of it then follow along <laughs> uh, thanks anyway so um that's it from me and I'll see you all later bye